now, it's your turn. Summon your strength. Fight for your team. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, this is Zold Bear also known as Siddharth Prashant and we just witnessed an amazing game of Dota 2 between Team Reckoning Esports and LXG Esports. To understand the gravity of uh, what the thing is between both these teams, you have to realize Reckoning Esports on one hand, they actually got eliminated early on in the online qualifiers by LXG Esports and they actually came into this tournament through the Pune qualifiers. So you know this is kind of a redemption run and it has been working out in their favor as reckoning esports in game one of this best of three series just had an amazing comeback with that r cordon draft and you know that that just showed us how beautiful a game of dota, dota can get even though it is the same map it is the same heroes and it is the same roshan fights and it is still exciting to watch a game of dota 2 after around what eight years uh, since this is gonna be uh, like this is what the eighth year Dota 2 is in the steam market right now and you have seen how exciting it gets and ladies and gentlemen uh, talking about the R cordon uh, this is something which I predicted that the R cordon is gonna be getting out of control later on into the game and that's exactly what we saw if the Terrorblade actually built a BKB pretty early on he could have gotten those barracks he could have gotten those essential kills pretty easily without losing his own life and that could have you know possibly secured the game for the side of LXG esports but that was not the case and and this is going to be game number two of Dota 2 between Reckoning Esports and LXG Esports. So I guess uh, in a little while we are going to be going to the drafting phase but in that time I want you guys to like share and subscribe to this YouTube channel and also tap the bell icon so you guys know when we are going to be streaming next we are going to be streaming a lot of Dota 2 uh, PUBG PUBG mobile and also many other games coming up for Playtonia so don't forget to do that as for this Acer Proto League 2019 the winner of this game is actually going to you know like if uh, uh, Reckoning Esports actually managed to win this game they have 50,000 rupees in their bag and that is exactly the price for the third place finish in this tournament right now and uh, we already have the deciders and uh, the grand finalists who are going to be playing in Mumbai on the 24th of November so don't forget to you know uh, go to that event if you are living in Mumbai and if you can't uh, don't worry about it because the Facebook live stream if you actually share it with the hashtag night of the predator you will get a chance to win a free pass to that event so ladies and gentlemen without any further ado let's actually get into the draft right now and see what we have in store in a game of Dota 2 as we see right here LXG Esports versus Reckoning Esports and we, we see a completely different kind of draft coming up as Reckoning Esports are going to be going with that Undying and the Centaur. The Phoenix and the Earthshaker Necrophos getting banned out for LXG Esports. Phoenix does perform really well versus uh, tanky heroes like the Undying and the Centaur and it's a good decision that uh, it is you know not working in their favor that they banned out the Phoenix they could have picked that versus Undying and the Centaur as for the side of Reckoning Esports we're going to be looking at the Ogre Magi, Wisp and the uh, Axe getting banned out and we see uh, LXG Esports are not going to be messing around they're going to be picking that Phantom Lancer pretty early on so playing uh, around that Phantom Lancer I believe Reckoning Esports still have a few more counters which they can pick versus LXG Esports and we are going to be uh, looking at the fourth ban coming for LXG Esports um, if they want to work uh, with the Tiny and the Phantom Lancer uh, a hero which they can possibly possibly ban out is you know I don't know a Spectre because Spectre does counter Phantom Lancer in the late game the reflection coming up from the Spectre is going to be dealing tons of damage but I guess LXG Esports are going to be banning out a Monkey King. Monkey King is also one of those heroes you have to be really careful against and uh, if he does get those Jingo Mastery stacks it is going to be kind of hard the Boundless Strike is a lot of AoE and not something the Phantom Lancer can deal with that easily coupled with the stuns that the Tiny brings into the table is going to be pretty risky so uh, I 
I guess LXG Esports, they're just going to ban out that Monkey King, make sure that they don't have the opportunity to carry the game like they just did in the previous, like uh, the R Cordon and the Monkey King draft yeah. actually came into effect very late into the game and that eventually led to them getting that game over LXG Esports, the first game of this best of three series. So if Reckoning Esports are going to be winning this, they are going to they are going to be getting the third place finish in this tournament. But if LXG Esports is going to be winning this, we are in for one more game of Dota 2. And we see the bans coming out for Reckoning Esports. They're going to ban out a Queen of Fain. As usual, that is a respect ban coming from the side of Reckoning Esports. They don't want Kaneki playing the Queen of Fain. He has proven himself to be a really good adversary. And they don't really want to deal with that. They want to make sure LXG Esports do not get any of their comfort picks. And they ban out a Winter Wyvern for Reckoning Esports. So LXG Esports, they don't really have an opportunity uh, to, you know, counter most of these uh, team fight heroes. Uh, Winter Wyvern is really good at doing that and we see an alchemist ban coming up for LXG esports uh, pretty standard they don't want to deal with an alchemist in the mid lane if that's going to be a tiny in the mid lane I guess and uh, the phantom lancer he does he does uh, struggle a lot if uh, the phantom lancer is going to be going towards the mid lane and they don't want to play up against an alchemist and we are going to be seeing the third pick for uh, reckoning esports they can they are you know they can use actually one more support uh, and uh, their mid laner has not been determined yet i guess they are going to be picking their safe lane carry for now or their position three because uh, i am kind of confused right here centaur warner is probably going to be the position three for them the undying the position five and the position four is not yet determined maybe they can roll out something uh, around the lines of the mirana mirana is pretty good versus a phantom land in the early game the star storm is going to be able to determine which one of those illusions is going to be the phantom lancer and we are going to be looking at an earth spirit getting picked up for reckoning esports uh, earth spirit is uh, has not been seen in a lot of uh, Ace of Battle League games, but without any doubt, Earth Spirit is one of those really annoying heroes. He's really tanky, and uh, looking at this, I actually see three strength heroes. LXG Esports do have um, that opportunity of picking up a Timbersaw. Timbersaw is really good versus most of these heroes. Uh, he might struggle a little bit versus the Centaur pretty early on, uh, but the Whirling, uh, the Whirling Axis is going to be dealing tons of damage, and uh, since these are strength strength heroes they are going to be taking a ton more damage and that's not something they can deal with so i assume reckoning esports uh, want to ban out the timber saw or something uh, there is an opportunity that lg esports can roll with that that is going to be pretty uh, good versus most of these heroes and the fourth pick for uh, reckoning esports is going to be underway while lg esports they're going to pick up the silencer so the global silence is going to be coming into effect and we see sven getting picked up for reckoning esports sven is going to be extremely good versus the phantom lancer he is considered one of the most uh, um, natural counters for the Phantom Lancer combined with the Earth Shaker or something. But uh, LXG Esports, since they did ban out the Earth Shaker, uh, I guess Reckoning Esports are going to settle by picking up that Sven. Uh, Sven is going to be extremely good. He has not been in the meta for quite a while. Uh, but uh, it does not really matter the Sven once he starts to get a lot of farm uh, he is going to be pretty uncontrollable and the LXG Esports they do have that global silence to work with maybe if the Sven initiates onto someone uh, he can pop up that global uh, silence make sure that the Phantom Lancer or whoever gets initiated upon manages to escape and the fourth pick for LXG Esports is going to be underway I would suggest they need a uh, blade mail hero someone really tanky to go up against the Sven and we don't really have a lot of blade mail heroes in this game right now the timber saw is as I said uh a potential pick since four of the heroes from Reckoning Esports are actually strength heroes and they are going to be really suffering versus a timber saw if LXG Esports manages to pick that and they still have the time to do that they don't have a position two or position three and uh, as a uh, I don't know centaur warner uh, he is not going to be having a pleasant time. None of the heroes from Reckoning Esports are going to be having the special time. And uh, Timbersaw, if he does manage to go to the mid lane, manage to farm up as much as he can. Uh, he is going to snowball out of control. So uh, I think LXG Esports are maybe, you know, teasing that pick or something. One minute remaining in their reserve time. Um, 
I guess they are going to go right down to the wire to decide who they actually want to pick to counter this lineup. And we are going to be looking at an Ursa. Ursa is going to be pretty good versus a Centaur and the Sven. But the amount of stuns that Reckoning Esports have, the Centaur has a stun, the Earth Spirit has a stun, and the Sven also has a stun. So the Ursa does have all the potential in the world to get kited around. And uh, I am kind of surprised they don't uh, roll out a Lifestealer or something. Lifestealer is also pretty good versus most of these strength heroes and he's especially good versus Sven because he can man fight him pretty easily the amount of damage that the Sven does he can just life steal it back and uh, life Stealer is also one of those heroes who deals tons of damage and we see an invoker ban coming up for reckoning esports I don't know why they want to ban out an invoker because most of these heroes uh, um, Invoker is has not been in the meta for now. Uh, they would probably go for something like a Lino or something. Uh, that is actually a really good ban. Uh, but I guess Reckoning Esports, they know uh, LXG Esports do not really want to pick a Lina uh, because of all these heroes that the Earth Spirit, especially, he can rotate onto the mid lane repeatedly and feed off the Lina, getting an easy kill onto the mid laner for Reckoning Esports. And I believe Reckoning Esports are yet to pick their mid laner. Uh, they can roll this one out in the mid lane if things get too heavy. Uh, but I don't think that is going to be the case. The fifth uh, ban coming up for LXG Esports. Uh, maybe they can ban out something around the lines of Lena or maybe even an Arc Warden because he is still in the game right now. And Reckoning Esports, once they do get that Arc Warden rolling, it is going to be kind of tough for them to deal with. And uh, the only counter that uh, LG Esports have for the Arc Warden is going to be the Tiny. The Phantom Lancer also gets countered pretty, uh, pretty much with that Maelstrom and the Mjolnir, which eventually uh, the Arc Warden does build. So I'm not going to be surprised, but they do manage to ban out the Huskar, I guess they don't really care if Reckoning Esports are going to be getting an Arc Warden once more and uh, they do get that uh, last pick for themselves so Reckoning Esports do have a little bit of time and a little bit of uh, you know money to actually think about uh, what they want to do as their last pick to counter this draft coming up from LXG Esports 30 seconds remaining in their reserve time they are gonna think hard and think long and think because things are not looking really good for them, the pigs, even though the Ursa is kind of considered a counter for the Centaur and the Sven, he's not going to be able to do all of that if he's going to get stun locked. And the Undying is also one of those heroes, you know, uh, with that Tombstone, he's going to be dealing tons of damage. And we actually see a Dark Willow getting picked up. So this is going to be a Phantom Lancer in the mid lane. The Ursa is going to be going towards the side lane. Uh, this is going to be kind of confusing right now. As Reckoning Esports, if they do get a really good mid laner who can deal with any of these heroes, it's going to be either the Tiny Phantom Lancer or the Ursa going towards the mid lane. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be a Silencer in the mid lane, uh, but we cannot really count that out. We'll only know that once Kaneki picks up his hero and uh, Reckoning Esports, they are going to be having enough time to think about what they want to pick right now. Lina is pretty good in this game, especially versus a Dark Willow, because um, even though Dark Willow can use that Shadow Realm to uh, dodge that Laguna Blade attempt coming up from the Lina. Uh, the amount of AoE that she deals with the Dragon Slave and the LSA is not something the Dark Fellow can deal with. So the Lina pick can be a really good one for Reckoning Esports. Uh, they are going to think though, they are going to make sure uh, they get the right pick at this game because if they do win this, they get third place in the Acer Predator League 2019. So let's actually see how this is going to be happening right now. Uh, 50 seconds remaining in their reserve time. Reckoning Esports, they have the advantage. They have the stronger draft as of now. And their last pick is just going to be the cream of the crop. As the amount of damage that Reckoning Esports can deal with this lineup is just getting too much. And this can be going out of control as we do see the mirana getting picked up for reckoning esports so not really surprised there uh, uh, the mirana is pretty good versus uh, the phantom lancer but he is going to be going up against kaneki in the mid lane so this is going to be a much better uh, lane for Moon on the Mirana. As we do see the picks coming up, Kaneki is going to be playing the Tiny in the, into the mid lane. He can possibly rotate uh, with the Phantom Lancer, who's going to be played by Mino if he wanted to. Basol is going to be playing the Silencer. Zeus is going to be playing the Ursa. And Parasite, as usual, is going to be playing that annoying heroes like the Tusk, uh, the Centaur. The, and he is going to be playing the Dark Willow right now, the most annoying of them all. And as for the side of Wreck, Esports, we see DO2 
Sati playing the Undying, World playing the Centaur Warners of Pharaoh playing the Earth Spirit, Divine playing the Sven and Moon on the Marana. So, ladies and gentlemen, here we have the trials for LXG Esports and Reckoning Esports, and we are going to see who is going to be the victor of game number two of this third place deciders. So, you know, grab yourself some popcorn, strap on your seatbelts, and get ready to witness some exciting game of Dota 2. Because this is going to be the redemption round for Reckoning Esports. They did lose uh, against LXG Esports in the online qualifier, and since they did get that one win in in that previous game in this best of three series uh, they have managed to even out the odds right now it is going to be one and one in the favor uh, of no one actually because uh, reckoning esports uh, they just need to win one more game to get into uh, the third place and we are going to be looking at uh, the game starting anytime soon right now so uh, before all of that ladies and gentlemen go ahead like this uh, live stream share this live stream and subscribe to this youtube channel and tap the bell icon so you guys know when we are going to be putting out content next Next. And without any further ado, the game is going to start. And for predictions, I would uh, certainly lean towards uh, Reckoning Esports uh, just because their drop just looks way more solid than the one uh, the LXG Esports have. But LXG Esports are known to play their really, you know, uh, really tailored pocket draft coming up. And maybe the Dark Willow plus the Tiny in the mid lane pick coming up. Uh, this is going to be kind of confusing uh, at the initial stages. The Earth Spirit though, he is going to roll onto the mid lane, place down that Observer Ward. So this is going to be a lot of vital information going for them. And uh, I don't think the Observer Ward is going to get spotted out by the Tiny or anyone. And we do see the Tiny placing uh, an Observer Ward in the mid lane possibly. Uh, and yes, he does. He does place the Observer Ward in the, the top area, making sure that the runes are going to get spotted out. So this is going to be kind of, uh, you know, a standard build coming. And we do see Parasite. He is going to be venturing forward. And we do see the Strong Hammer coming on to him. And the arrow is going to land. And that is going to be certainly First Blood going the way of Reckoning Esports as Zafedo is going to be drawing First Blood, the Earth Spirit is going to be having a lot of gold to work with and Earth Spirit is also one of those heroes you really don't want to get fat and if he does get a blade mail or something things are going to get out of hand and um, the Earth Spirit, he, he is a pretty strong hero, he is a well balanced hero and he is certainly one of the most annoying heroes in this game as we do see the Centaur he actually wants to go for the Stomp onto uh, the Silencer, gets that bond rune pretty much easily, Reckoning Esports getting three of the bounty runes and the silencer taking a ton of damage in the bottom lane will be able to is going to be forced to use a bunch of tangos but you know tangos are not really uh, considered to be the best healing items right now uh, unless he had to you know use a salve to get back to full HP I don't think it's going to be a costly affair as we do see a pause coming up from a Pasol right now so uh, I guess uh, Team LXG Esports do have a little bit of trouble over at their side maybe this is a tactical pause uh, rethinking their strategies or something as we are going to be looking at moon versus tiny in the mid lane the mirana is going to be having the slight advantage as of now he will be able to secure those range creeps with that arrow pretty much easily as the top lane it's going to be the undying and the earth spirit supporting the sven and this is going to be kind of hard to deal with because all of these heroes are melee and the ursa can go for a kill pretty much easily but the dark willow he is the X factor in this game if he does manage to get most of those bramble mazes active and the Ursa has enough time to deal the damage this might uh, you know turn the tables on to LXG Esports favor as we do see uh, the game uh, is gonna be kind of uh, long right now the uh, Dark Willow has leveled up his Shadow Realm the Mirana has that arrow as we just saw which was you know crucial to get that kill onto the uh, Dark Willow in the top dire jungle uh, so this is kind of mm, confusing right now we cannot really say who has the decisive advantage uh, the centaur though he is going to be uh, in a little bit of trouble versus a silencer and a phantom lancer solo uh, but he does have a really good base region going for him so i cannot really complain he he can have a little bit of trouble uh, early on but if the rotations are going to be made by either the earth spirit or the undying things can go uh, south for them so you cannot really predict that 
As for the Ursa, has that orb of venom, has that stout shield. It's going to be going for the face boots first, so not really surprised there. The movement speed is going to matter a lot in the early game. And uh, I guess this is going to be a long pause coming as the Tiny does disconnect from the game. Uh, he is going to be reconnecting in a little while, I presume. A silencer also disconnects from the game. What is this? This is kind of confusing. I guess they had a, have a little bit of technical issues from their side, so this is certainly not going to be a tactical pause. And uh, we are going to be looking at Reckoning Esports. They are going to be waiting and seeing how this is going to be going on. Uh, what I would actually predict that the Sven should build in this game is, I don't know, he can, you know, go for the standard uh, BKB into Daedalus build coming up, uh, which, ha which is, you know, one of the best ways to play Sven. Uh, but since they do have a lot of these... Uh, heroes like the tiny and uh, the ursa actually working in favor they have to be careful and we are going to be getting back into the game pretty soon so uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, this is just you know we're just showing what's happening it looks like there is a little bit of packet loss for pasol uh, from the side of lxg esports so he's just gonna you know, I, I guess we're gonna sort this issue out pretty soon so don't really go anywhere just hang on to the stream uh, grab yourself some popcorn and you know start commenting down below as to what you think is gonna be the you know deciding factor in this game whether it's going to be reckoning esports to owing uh, LXG esports or is it going to be LXG esports bringing this game back and with the next game uh, we're gonna be seeing how the third game is gonna be going on as uh, the Sven, he needs he needs a lot of farm, and uh, I don't think he is going to be having a lot of space <laughs> if any one of the supports in the top lane are going to be rotating rotating to the bottom, trying to shut down the Phantom Lancer instead, and. Uh, this is going to be kind of hard. Maybe if Reckoning Esports had a ranged support or something uh, which can deal with the Dark Willow, uh, it could have worked out in their favor. Maybe even a position for Lina could have worked out, but I guess they wanted to roll with the Earth Spirit. And you can't really roll out the Earth Spirit out of the game just yet. The Mirana, meanwhile, in the mid lane, has that Wraith Man and is trying to go for a second one. Uh, two Wraith Bands it has been a standard build in the mid lane for a long time right now. And you if you just finish up one Wraith Band into a Ring of Acula, it is going to be giving you that essential mana region plus that Wraith Band, that extra bit of Wraith Band is going to be adding up to that damage and uh, he will be able to secure these last hits pretty easily and especially versus a Tiny who by the way has one of the most... Uh, I think he has the maximum amount of base damage with that tree uh, other than the Train Protector who deals around 90 damage as base and... Uh, I guess the cosign is going to be given by LXG Esports right now and the game is going to resume. The Centaur Warner versus the Silencer and the Phantom Lancer in the bottom lane. Uh, it is going to be a match to see. I don't think Centaur is going to be having a pleasant time. And we do see the Earth Spirit actually in the top lane. He's just waiting to uh, get the snipe onto the courier. He will be able to spot out the courier. He is trying to go for it and it is going to go down right now. I think one more right click coming up from the Earth Spirit will be able to secure that and that is going to be the courier going down and he is going to be able to roll towards safety. And as he is going to be under that uh, secret shop, in, sorry, the, uh, you know, side shop coming up. And we do see the silencer <laughs> pausing once more. So they are getting a lot of technical issues uh, for the silencer. And uh, I'm not really surprised. Uh, he just wanted to try out and see uh, if the pause is going to be working out in his favor. I guess it d really did not. He needs to reset his internet connection possibly to actually work with this. Uh, meanwhile, in the bottom lane, not, I don't know, really know how to predict this because the Centaur, he is going to be dealing some damage. He does not have a lot of mangoes in his uh, inventory, so he cannot really keep on spamming these spells. So, not really going to be surprised if the Centaur is going to be forced out of the lane. Uh, unless one of the heroes from the side of Reckoning Esports uh, rotates to the bottom, uh, the Centaur is not going to be getting any kind of farm. And I can attest to that. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is... Uh this is looking to be kind of a long pause right now, so I guess we'll resume in a little while. Uh, so let's actually see how this is going to be happening. This is just getting uh, kind of confusing uh, at the fact, like, so early on you have to lo look for such a long pause. This just uh, destroys the excitement of the game, kind of. Um, the only thing which can uh, actually keep me going is just going ahead and trying to predict what's going to happen. Uh, the Phantom Lancer, he is going to be able to get a lot of farm right now. I'm not really going to be surprised uh, in the bottom lane. 
Um, the only uh, hero from the side of Reckoning Esports who can actually counter him in the lane is gonna be the Sven actually. So, uh, okay, okay, it looks like Mino from the side of uh, LXG Esports actually. Okay, okay, no, 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 I guess my operator from the production room is just messing with me. He just, uh, you know, sending out jokes. So I keep myself entertained in this lonely place casting Dota 2 and uh, I guess I guess we are gonna be back in a short while after a short commercial break because uh, it looks like this is gonna be a long pause so ladies and gentlemen don't really go anywhere grab yourself some popcorn and buckle up your seat belts because this is gonna be one hell of an amazing game of Dota 2 Now, it's your turn. Summon your strength. Fight for your team.
now, it's your turn. Summon your strength. Fight for your team. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that, uh, you know, LXG Esports have managed to figure out their issues over here. Uh, Pasol and his friends did have a lot of uh, ping issues, apparently. And uh, this is going to be mattering a lot. And you see the network charts this early on in the game before the one minute. It is kind of confusing. It is kind of surprising to see the Earthsword on top of the network charts. You won't really expect that. And you see the GPM also 669 at one point. You won't really believe. Uh, but you have to give credit where it's due. He did get that uh, kill onto the courier. The courier snipe coming from the Earth uh, Spirit is going to delay most of these item deliveries in the mid lane, especially for the tiny. And he cannot. Uh, it, it's not really going to matter much for the Tiny to be particular because Tiny does not uh, need a lot of items to deal damage. He is pretty good by himself. He has a lot of damage and with the tree also he can deal tons of damage. So not really surprised over there. And it looks like the go sign has been given by Pasol. No, it looks like uh, <laughs> Reckoning Esports are going to take a little bit of time to actually get their players in or something. Uh, I, I guess uh, it's not going to matter much. They are going to resume in a little while. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys have any predictions for this game, just leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think is going to be the outcome of this match because we are, me personally, uh, I am leaning a little bit towards Reckoning Esports' side, uh, but the Phantom Lancer is going to be, you know, he is going to be really good uh, coming up in the mid game where there is going to be that little time window where the Sven does not really have that BKB but he has these other items like the Blink for example. Uh, he is going to be taking a little bit of damage and uh, that is not something you can deal with that easily especially if you're going to be playing against a Tiny who deals a lot of nuke damage. The Avalanche and Toss combo has been something which we have seen from LXG Esports which has worked out in their favor and we are going to be getting back into the game right now after a long ass pause so I am kind of relieved the Undying is going to be taking a little bit of damage from uh, the uh, Dark Willow and we do see an initiation onto the Dark Willow but uh, the roll is not going to land and we see the uh, Ursa though he is going to turn around try to you know uh, harass that Earth Spirit out of the lane and the Earth Spirit he is looking to be kind of good right now the Shadow Realm is going to be there onto the Dark Willow so he needs to be careful he needs to make sure he does not get sniped out by the Dark Willow so that is something uh, he has to look out for meanwhile in the bottom lane we see the phantom lancer he is doing pretty well and we do see a double wave onto the, onto the bottom lane so the lane is gonna get pushed up pretty much easily the return aura is gonna be there from the centaur and look at how much damage he is dealing to the silencer just by getting hit and uh, he is gonna get harassed a little bit from that uh, return aura but not really gonna matter much uh, he does have a lot of tangos to work with uh, so i'm not gonna be surprised uh, if he does manage to get that amount of sustain in this game as meanwhile in the mid lane we see kaneki he is gonna be dealing a lot, lot of damage towards the Mirana uh, but he's not going to be dealing enough and we see the Undying just uh, moonwalking around dealing some damage and we do see the stuns coming up from the Sven right there. The Sven is going to be able to go back to those creep waves just try to form them up. The Undying has run out of mana so he needs to be careful. Meanwhile in the bottom lane the Phantom Lance coming up from the Phantom Lancer is going to be dealing tons of damage and the Centaur is looking to be in a little bit of trouble. He has the magic wand if he actually wants to turn around and take that fight and meanwhile we see the dark pillow he's going to be taking tons of damage right now the creep wave is actually going to be um, pulled out by the dark willow so that is going to be the you know the ursa getting a little bit of farm uh, albeit he is gonna you know take a little bit of damage from those creeps uh, not really going to be a lot he can just you know tangle that up and make sure he heals back again and meanwhile in the bottom we see uh, okay we are going to be looking at the centaur he is going to be in a lot of trouble right now he just managed to pop up that magic wand but the curse is going to be there and that is going to be first blood probably one more right click from the phantom lancer will be able to secure the deal and that is going to be him going down sorry not first blood the first blood was actually you know uh, uh, parasite going down in the top lane on the dark willow so you know forgive me for the little mistakes i have made 
and you see the undying right now he does not have a lot of mana but he is rotating onto the mid lane okay he is gonna die towards the tier two make sure that he respawns pretty fast right now so not really surprised that he is going to be giving a lot of gold to his teammates. Maybe he could have, you know, gone down to the neutral creeps. Uh, but going down to the neutral creeps is going to increase your respawn timer. That is something which we have seen in our, our games. So uh, Dota 2 is going to punish you for sacrificing to the neutral creeps to get back to the base fast. And uh, the Undying, he is going to respawn. He is going to get back onto the top lane. He is going to be taking a little bit of damage. The Bramble Maze is not going to land onto him. And uh, this is going to, you know, zone him out a little bit. The creeps are going to be tanking up most of the damage coming in. And it looks like the uh, Ursa is actually going to go down. The Soul Rift coming up from DOT is going to be able to secure the deal. And we see, meanwhile, in the bottom lane, uh, the Phantom Lancer is going to be taking a little bit of damage. The uh, Sven does not have a lot of mana to work with. He does not have a Storm Hammer to actually try to secure the kill. But no, he pops that mango and does get the stun onto the Dark Pillar. And she is going to go down. 862 gold going the way of Divine and things are going in the favor of Reckoning Esports right now. Meanwhile, we do see Kaneki. He is going to be um, taking a little bit of damage, but he he is really a nuker hero, so I'm not really going to be surprised uh, if he actually wins the lane in the mid. And we do see the Silencer. He is going to be taking tons of damage. He gets the roll down, and the Boulder Smash is going to be able to connect that stun, and that is going to be the Centaur taking one more kill onto the Silencer as he... Like we do see the Earth Spirit, he is going to be TPing back to base, making sure that uh, he is going to live for now. As meanwhile, the bottom runes are going to get secured by the Centaur Warner. Meanwhile, the top ones uh, are going to get secured by the Tiny. So uh, it's going to be two runes going for each team right here. As we do see the Ursa actually trying to initiate onto the Sven. The Sven is taking a lot of damage. The Shadow Room getting popped up. But no, we see the Bramble Maze is going to just delay the death of the Ursa. The Ursa is going to run towards that... Uh, uh, that secret shop right there making sure that he does not get uh, spotted out the decay coming up from the undying will be able to secure the deal but no he does not know where exactly the ursa is he's just gonna force to back off and so are lxg esports they are losing the lane in the top by quite a large margin and we see the initiation onto the mid lane the arrow is gonna land and the star storm is gonna be dealing tons of damage but kaneki he is gonna toss up that mirana but no mu is gonna be able to get that kill onto the tiny and that was quite an amazing rotation coming up and we do see Dio is going to sacrifice himself to the tier one once more he just wants to go back to base fast enough man don't blame the kid he he knows what he's doing and the Sven he has two points into both his ton and his cleave and they might look to go towards uh, the Ursa in, in the next few minutes and we do see the decay coming up from uh, the undying and the soul rip actually working out and that is going to be him going down the moonlight shadow getting popped up by the Mirana he will be able to survive for the moment and uh, he is going to be able to get back uh, towards uh, his base or something just heal up right now as the shrine is going to be popped up by the earth spirit in the top lane he is going to be level 3 level 3 on earth spirit is quite important because the boulder smash he will have the sun and the silence to work with and that is going to be essential when you're facing against a hero like the a dark willow and we do see the sun coming up onto the ursa once more the decay is going to be dealing tons of damage the boulder smash back onto the ursa he is going to be taking a lot of damage but no the cursed crown is going to land but the zombies are already dealing a lot of damage and divine on this man is going to be able to secure that last hit onto the ursa and he is not going to go down as we see dot he is not going to be giving up right now as they do go on to the dark willow and dark willow is going to go down parasite is going to be feeding two more kills onto the top lane and reckoning esports they are making this work right now in all the lanes the centaur is gonna try to finish up that hood of defiance and once he does he will have that little bit of magic resistance which is gonna allow him to deal a lot more damage onto the bottom lane as we see kaneki he is trying to look for a kill onto mu but uh, the rotation coming up from the undying is gonna discourage him from doing that as meanwhile in the bottom lane we see the uh, phantom lancer he's actually trying to initiate onto the center of warner and we see the rotation coming up from the earth bridge he is trying to look for a stun he will be able to get that stun and the silence onto 
the Phantom Lancer, but the Phantom Lancer needs to be careful. He is a little bit too deep right now as the Stampede is going to get used up by the Centaur to actually try to get back to base a little bit faster. The Starstorm in the mid lane is going to be used and Kaneki is going to be taking a lot of damage. He's not going to commit that arrow to try to go for a kill as the region is going to be there and Kaneki is going to be uh, denied that and that is going to move uh, that is going to be Mu actually getting that uh, regeneration rune. Meanwhile, in the top lane, things are looking extremely well for the Sven. Has completed that Ring of Aquila, so he will be able to spam out that uh, Storm Hammer whenever he uh, he requires it to. And the Triangle Boots actually getting completed onto the Earth Spear, so that is going to be a lot of movement speed going his way. As the Undying, he's going to be making his rotation back onto the top lane right now. The Cursed Crown is going to get used up and the Undying has made his rotation. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, the Boar Smash is going to connect onto Kaneki. Kaneki is taking a lot of damage, but the arrow is not going to land. The toss is going to be there. It's not going to be enough damage to get those kills. And meanwhile, in the top lane, we see Parasite again going down. And they're not done yet. They actually want to go for the chase onto the Ursa. They will not be able to get that. So they're just going to settle for getting up all those farms in the top lane. And the Sven is looking really strong right now. He is looking really fat and uh, he is just gonna get fatter because the Sven can rotate back into the jungle once he gets a life shield or something. And even without that life shield, with that third skill of his, he can just farm up as much as he wants. And Zeus, meanwhile, he only has an orb of him. He has not completed that phase boot. And uh, things are not looking really good for him as we do see Parasite getting spotted out by uh, the Undying right now. The Cursed Crown is going to be there and he is certainly going to go around as Kaneki is also going to be making that way. But no, the Moonlight Shadow getting used up by the Mirana is going to be able to give a lot of uh, mobility for his own teammates to actually get that kill. As the Silencer meanwhile in the bottom lane goes down, we see the Sven actually baiting out the Fury Swipes coming from the Ursa. And the Ursa is trying to look for a kill onto the Sven and the Sven is possibly going to go down right now the cursor crown is going to connect and he does have a stun to work with he is going to be using that onto the ursa he's going to run for his dear life the boundary rune is going to get spotted out right now but no he's not going to be able to get that he has magic wands to work with he's going to run towards this shrine a few more rockets might be able to do the deal but no we see kaneki from the low ground with that avalanche will be able to secure the kill onto the swan and that is going to be his killing spree getting broken by kaneki and kaneki is looking pretty strong right now he has that boundary rune being bottled up and he also has the power trace completed and ha and is gonna go for the bling dagger uh, next not really uh, beating around the bush want to wants to go for the bling dagger make sure that he has a really good lane right now as a centaur he's gonna be in the top lane for now and i might presume the sven is gonna go towards the bottom lane and yes he does he's gonna tp to the bottom lane make sure that the matchups are gonna be quite even and we see the tiny illusions are dealing tons of damage onto the mirana right now she needs to be careful if she gets initiated upon by the tiny she is gonna go down because he does deal a lot of damage as of now <coughs> and we see uh, the Ursa by the way he has completed that face boost and the Dark Willow he actually wants to go for a kill onto the Centaur so they need to be careful we see the smoke up coming in from uh, Reckoning Esports they want to go to the bottom lane secure the kill on the Phantom Lancer and they will be able to spot out the Phantom Lancer as DOT on the Undying he is going to be able to go onto him the Boulder Smash is going to be there and the Global Silence from the Silencer is going to make sure that the, the Phantom Lancer will be able to disengage from that fight and that was a really clutch usage of the Global Silence but the sad part is he will not be able to have that in the next team fight as meanwhile in the mid lane Kaneki is just dealing tons of damage onto Mu and we do see the arrow actually missing once more and Kaneki seems to know exactly where the arrows are going to land we see the double edge onto the Ursa the Ursa is going to be getting pretty low right now and he does have the enrage to pop up if he wants to turn around and fight but I don't think he's stupid enough to do that because the double edge coming up from the uh, from the centaur is going to be a lot to deal with as we see Mu back into the jungle he's just going to be farming up those creep waves and uh, since he does have the ring of Aquila and he also has the trade band uh, to be exact he is going to be dealing tons of damage uh, through right clicks uh, as meanwhile we see the Sven is going to be going for a Sanj and Yasha instead and the Earth Spirit he's also looking pretty strong meanwhile in the bottom lane the tier 1 is going to get sieged up they don't have a glyph of fortification the Undying is going to come towards that try to you know uh, get that uh, deny over there but he will not be able to do that meanwhile Kaneki with that haste to he's trying to look for a kill onto 
the earth fit the earth fit does have that role and he will be able to live right now we do see kaneki he is trying his best to actually look for a kill but no he's just gonna settle for dealing a decent amount of damage onto the tier one in the mid lane and we see all the heroes from the side of lng esports they are gonna rotate towards the mid lane meanwhile in the top we see uh the tower is getting seized up by the central warner they will have to make the rotation onto the top lane pretty soon enough as we do see the ursa doing exactly that and uh, that is not going to be you know the centaur uh, getting that kill onto the tower pretty easily as we see move back onto the mid lane he's just trying to deal as much damage as he can as much as as much farm as he wants to farm so just a lot of even matchup still going in the centaur has not finished up his triangle boots is going to prioritize getting the hood of defiance over that the hood does you know give him a lot of region so i cannot really complain and he has that blink dagger getting queued up as quite next and we do see the stack getting attempted by the sven and sven will be able to get that without uh, you know taking a lot of damage uh, he is pretty tanky as a hero and we see the centaur rotating onto the top lane he is trying to look for a stomp onto the ursa but he needs to be careful he is getting backed up by a lot of these heroes we see the earth spirit rotating from the uh from the back side and he's not gonna get spotted up right now we do see the moonlight shadow working into their favor they can try to go for a kill we do see the earth spirit actually getting spotted out right now and he is gonna be forced to back off he does know they placed a sentry onto that uh, top cliff right there so they are gonna back off and this is looking like the game going their way as we do see the boar smash is going to miss but the arrow is going to connect and we see the storm hammer is also going to connect and the and we do see parasite actually trying to go for uh, you know the fear right there but that was just a little bit too late as kaneki is going to fall down and that is going to be a lot of gold going the way of the mirana and the mirana is just looking really strong right now she's go she's gonna go for yule scepter instead uh yule scepter on a mirana it's not something which i have seen a lot uh, we do see the deny coming up from Parasite. What a player, man. He does not have a lot of damage, but he does manage to get that. And that is uh, equal to having a Crystal Maiden denying the tower. That is uh, how good that was. As we do see the rotations onto the Radiant Jungle, we see the Phantom Lancer actually trying to go for a kill onto the Earth Spirit. The Earth Spirit's Boulder Smash is not going to connect as he turns his sights around to the Undying. And the Undying, though, he is going to go down. Kaneki with the Blink Dagger reveal is going to be able to get that kill. Meanwhile, we do see the uh, Ursa over in the top lane he is gonna get arrowed up and he is going to go down and we see two boundary runes getting secured by the side of uh, uh, by the side of Reckoning Esports as two is gonna be secured by the side of LSG Esports and this is looking kind of even right now but no you know just paint me wrong as we see the silencer with one more right click moon is in a dominating streak and the only thing which is bothering me right now is why the hell would he want to go for a yule scepter in this game and we do see the blink dagger from the tiny is will probably be able to get that kill onto move we do see the blink coming up but no he is going to disengage right now the bramble mage is going to connect the stamp is going to miss it is only going to land onto uh, the dark pillow is going to make sure that the bedlam does not deal the damage but no Kaneki, he is gonna go ahead and get that kill onto the Centaur Warner, and that is going to be 6 and 14 in the favor of Reckoning Esports. Uh, but the amount of farm that Sven is getting, the amount of space that he is getting to farm, there is just way too much. They have to make sure they shut down the Sven before he gets the BKB because once he does, the tiniest nuke is not going to be able to deal as much damage as he does right now. And this is that small time window where the tiny can actually, you know, use that bling dagger, get those initiations done onto the Sven and shut him down for good. But that does not seem to be the case as we do see the Moonlight Shadow getting popped up in the mid lane. They are trying to go for the kill on to Kaneki as Kaneki though he is gonna get stunned up right now the boar smash is gonna connect and maybe the arrow the arrow is not even gonna get committed by Mu as he manages to get that kill as meanwhile Sven in the bottom lane has that mask of madness has that ultimate okay he does not actually pop the ultimate he's just gonna be getting the kill with that mask of madness so he will have his ultimate down in about 20 more seconds and they can go for a team fight and it looks like that's exactly what Reckoning Esports are trying to go for they're trying to push over the tier 2 in the bottom lane the Phantom Lancer is just going to be farming up in the top lane pushing that also the fortification is going to get used up as the Sven he is trying to deal as much damage as he can the centaur does have the stampede to work with if things get too hairy 
and the global silence is also going to be there on the silencer as we do see the TPs coming up from the Undying and the Mirana. They're just trying to stave off the push coming onto the top lane as the silencer, he is going to reveal himself for quite a, a little bit of time but not nearly enough so I don't think he is going to get killed as we see Kaneki, he is going to TP onto the shrine and we do see the boss coming up from the Undying and this is kind of unfortunate because Tiny does see the Sven but he does not see the uh, Centaur actually so if he does want to go for a kill onto the Sven, uh, the reinitiation attempts coming up from uh, the from the centaur is going to be real. So Kaneki, he is going to back off for now. He's going to go back to the mid lane. Just try to farm up those creepies. Try to make sure that he gets more of his items. Possibly, you know, finish up that Echo Saber. As we are going to be looking at uh, Parasite, he is uh, getting initiated upon. No, maybe not. It is going to look like... Uh, the uh, Stampede is going to get committed to actually try to get that kill. The arrow is going to land onto the Phantom Lancer. The Phantom Lancer is taking a lot of damage with a fear coming up from the Dark Pillar. It's going to make sure that the Earth Spirit is going to go down. He does not have a, any mana to work with. The Diffusal Blade getting completed and the Undying. He is going to use that Soul Rift as his last resort. The uh, Star Storm is not going to be landing on any of these heroes and that is possibly going to be, you know, the Mirana going down. As we see the disconnect coming up from Zafedo, Earth Spirit has disconnected from the game and the pause has been made from the side of Reckoning Esports Cafe PC, I guess. So I'm not really surprised. They will have to, you know, recharge their PCs, recharge their... Uh, I guess that is how uh, cafes work, you know, uh, you, you just get the recharge done and get back into the game. So not really going to be waiting for a long time. The centaur though, he is getting initiated upon by the Ursa and uh, the Tiny. And I don't think he has any way of escaping from this. He does not have a stampede to work with. He is going to be ticking down to the dot damage coming from the silencer. So no blink dagger is also going to be there. So I, I don't think uh, World will be able to survive this onslaught coming from the side of LXG Esports. And uh, his team does have a 4K net worth lead, but that is, you know, solely towards uh, the Svens right there. The Sven is going to try to go for a kill onto the Phantom Lancer. The Phantom Lancer is over here in the top lane. He's just trying to go for a kill onto the Mirana, but no, he has dove in too far. So we, we don't really know how to predict how this fight is going to be. But one thing for sure, the Centaur is going to go down. And yeah, this is... Uh, this is going to be kind of a long pause, I presume. They're just going to recharge and come back. You almost had that. <laughs> so, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and leave a comment down below. You know, just interact with the chat. Uh, go ahead and predict because this is, you know, Dota 2. Anything can happen at any time. And uh, you guys are, you know, you, you would know what to actually say, what to actually predict. So... Anything illegal is uh, just don't do anything illegal. That's it. Go ahead and you know bet uh, ten rupees or something towards your friends or something. I don't really know. As uh, reckoning esports with those two disconnects, uh, I don't know. I guess they are going to be reconnecting pretty soon. I don't really know uh, how long it's going to be taking for them. The Centaur Warner, uh, as I said, he is dead. What I am actually confused about right now is what the Sven is actually building because he wanted to go for the Sanjin Yasha pretty early on. If he went for a Bling Dagger instead, I believe the initiation from coming from uh, Reckoning Esports is going to be kind of high. The Bling Dagger on the Centaur followed up by the Bling Dagger from the Sven is going to be too much for them to handle, you know, possibly get the kill onto the Silencer early on get that pesky little global silence out of the game as we are going to be looking at the last player from the side of reckoning esports he is the only one who needs to connect right now and uh, yeah uh, he is going to connect pretty fast i presume since the earth spirit just reconnected back into the game and he just needs to do his recharge and uh, we, we are back to playing a game of dota 2. so ladies and gentlemen this is yeah i guess I'm boring you guys a lot, so we are going to be coming back after a short commercial break. So don't go anywhere, grab yourselves a tub of popcorn and strap on your seatbelts because this is going to be a game of Dota 2 between Team Reckoning Esports and LXG Esports.
and gentlemen that was quite a long pause and you know a much treated break for me i just drank some water and came back and we are going to be looking at how the game is going to proceed right now as previously where we left off the centaur was kind of dying and i think he did die as we do see the arrow actually connecting on to the dark willow he is going to go down nothing really surprising over there the mirana with that moonlight shadow is going to venture a little bit forward he's going to try to go for the leap will be able to get that leap she is going to be safe for now the enrage getting popped up by the ursa he is taking a ton of damage the magnetize is also going to be dealing tons of damage to him and the stacks are getting refreshed again and again and that is going to be certainly zeus going down uh adding that up and uh, yeah the ages is gonna get popped up and ages is something we actually missed in the game right now uh, sorry for that i do apologize for not giving you guys the 100 percent action coming up but no kaneki <coughs> he is gonna go down right here and it looks like uh, the ursa is trying to go for a kill onto the spin the spin is taking a little bit of damage the cursed ground is gonna be activated right now and that might just be the phantom lancer trying to go for the kill onto the spin but no the spin is gonna be able to get one more hit and that is gonna be Dark Willow going down and we are just left with the Phantom Lancer alone. He is going to be taking a ton of damage if he wants to decide to go to take a fight against the Sven. The Sven does not have a Blink Dagger so I don't think they have a way of initiating. He's just going to go back and resume forming up his items right here. And as I said he does not have a Blink Dagger but he does have that queued up and I think he does have the gold to get it. So not really going to be surprised. Uh, he's going to be probably you know replacing the uh, curling blade for the bling dagger maybe i was thinking if he wants to replace the stout shield but no the stout shield does you know do some uh, decent amount of uh, you know damage block coming and you don't really want to give that away uh, combining that with the uh, curling blade the curling blade does increase your creep damage just a little bit uh, but it's not gonna matter a lot much because the sven is one of those really hard hitting heroes we see the undying he is not looking really strong right here. Uh, we see uh, we see this one. He's just going to be farming up most of these ancient stacks while the Marana has completed that Yule Scepter. So she has a really good means of survival. If things get too hairy, is going to go for that Maelstrom and then a BKB getting geared up for the Marana. Meanwhile, the Centaur Warner has that Blink Dagger getting completed. Is going to go for a four staff next. Not really something you see on a uh, on a Centaur that much in these games. Uh, but that extra bit of mobility is going to be pretty nice uh, coming up from a Centaur. Meanwhile, we do see the Phantom Lancer pinging out the location of the Sven right there. The Global Silence is going to get used right now. And the Sven, he is going to get bursted down. And that is going to be Mino with that really good invis is going to be able to secure that kill pretty much easily. The Global Silence really not coming into... Uh, really, you know, that's not a bad usage of the Global Silence. The only thing I am going to be a little worried about is the fact it won't be there in the next team fight. And they don't really uh, essentially require the Sven for most of these team fights. The Phantom Lancer is going to be taking tons of damage from the Centaur itself. As talking about the Centaur, meanwhile in the top lane, the Tiny is going to be pinging out his location. He is trying to go for a kill on the Centaur maybe, but no, he is kind of tanky. I don't think that is going to be a likely option, a likely scenario. As the Undying, he is going to be TPing onto the Dire Jungle, you know, just placing a few wards here and there, making sure that uh, the Sven is going to be covered for now. The entrances of the jungle, if they had a sentry ward over there, the Sven would have had enough time to actually blink to safety, but no, sadly, that was not the case. It was a Sven going down once more, and uh, yeah, the things are uh, still in favor of Reckoning Esports. But uh, the tables can turn as we did see in the previous game. Reckoning Esports, they were at the short end of the streak in the previous game. But they somehow managed to make it work. And it looks like they are not trying to give, the, give up in this game. As they have smoked up with four people into the Radiant Jungle. The scan is not going to be there from the Radiant side. So um, nothing really happening right now. The Undying is going to be going towards the Ancient Jungle. And uh, the Centaur Warner, I think the smoke is going to pop right there. They are going to initiate onto the Tiny. The Tiny is taking a ton of damage right now. And he is going to go down without any doubt. He has managed to toss a bunch of these people up. The Tiny build, he is going to try to escape. The Bramble Mage is going to delay the kill onto the Tiny for a little bit. He is going to be able to live right now. He is going to go back to base. He is going to be safe. And the ultimate getting committed by the Sven, not really going to matter much. He is just going to turn around and try to get that kill onto one of these other heroes. 
as the silencer he is going to be able to run back to his base and he is going to be safe for now the swin though he is going to make the best usage of his ultimate this form of most of these neutral camps in the radiant jungle the ursa is looking kind of fat right now uh if he does manage to initiate onto the swin and something this is going to be kind of hard for them to deal with as the phantom lancer his location is actually going to get spotted out by the earth spirit they're all going to be converging onto his location he is going to get stunned up and silenced and he is going to go down without any doubt not even having a chance to deploy his manta style to get rid of that silence that is how stunlocked he was and that is him going down 56 seconds on the bench and that is gonna allow the friend to actually you know form up his uh, bkb the bkb is gonna be kind of essential especially running into much of these bramble mazes uh that is proving quite difficult for the Sven to handle uh he does not his mobility has been uh, extremely hindered by the bramble maze being placed up by the dark willow and he does not really want to deal with that so the bkb is going to be pretty good versus that uh, as we see the phantom lancer has actually a hood of defiance what the hell uh, not really an item you go for on a phantom lancer but I guess he knows what he's doing. He wants that extra bit of magic resistance. That's in the bottom lane. We see the creep waves just getting pushed up by the tiny. Maybe you know, trying to create some space onto the bottom. So uh, the side of reckoning esports really don't go for a push onto the mid lane. As we do see, the Earth Spirit and the Sven are going to be deeper inside of their side of the map. While the Undying Centaur and the Mirana are just trying to look for an easy kill. Uh, onto any of these unfortunate heroes who are going to be you know going towards their way so things are looking kind of good for reckoning esports as the sun is just farming up his items right here as uh, so is the ursa is going to have the bkb getting queued up in his quick buy i don't know how well the bkb is going to be working uh against the spend because he deals a lot of damage the end rate will be able to uh you know make him survive for a little while longer the only thing the bkb is going to help with is the fact that he's not going to get stunned up as much as he is in these in most of these team fights so we do see the urn and the triangle boots getting completed for the dark willow uh, not really surprised right there a standard build for a support dark willow and talking about dark willow you know uh, there was a time when he was actually played as a position to carry uh, you know crazier times back then uh, the dark willow considered to be a carry back uh, not considered actually just being played as a carry because uh, I don't know people are crazy whenever a new hero comes out and I am pretty stoked to find uh, stoked for Grimstroke to actually come back into captain's mode uh, because once he does that will open up a lot of draft strategies for most of these uh, teams right here locally and in the international scene because Grimstroke is pretty good uh, he is a really good nuker and we are going to be talking uh, we are going to be seeing LC esports they are going to be smoking up as their full team is going to push towards the tier 2 in the top lane and uh, they are just trying to place a bunch of wards and we do see that uh, uh, Reckoning Esports they do have a good idea that people are going to be in the general vicinity the Undying is going to run into a sentry ward he needs to be careful the Mirana and the Centaur they are going to be going forward trying to take this fight they do spot out the Ursa though so uh, let's just see if they can get a kill or two and we do see the blink and stun onto the uh, tiny right there but no they don't have any detection to work with we do see the uh, Dark Willow he is taking a ton of damage one more right click is going to be able to secure the deal and the centaur he is going to be cursed round up the boulder smash is going to connect and that is going to be one more kill going their way as pasol is going to go down we see the boulder onto the just going a little bit forward and we see the stun that is going to be the earth also going down the tiny and the phantom lancer are going to be the only ones alive and they're immediately rotating onto the mid lane no they're just going to go towards roshan they want to make the best usage of this time make sure that they get that roshan and with that on to i don't know the mirana she will be able to deal tons of damage in these team fights you know being able to beat in and out with that lead and uh, the earth spirit going back into the mid lane just trying to finish up that free phase make sure that he gets some amount of farm um, as their carries are going to be making short work of the sun as you see right here the Sven is going to be able to get this Rashan pretty much easily. The Aegis and the T is getting dropped up by uh, Rashan, so not really surprised over there. We do see a spear attempt coming from the Dark Willow, but that is going to be just a little bit too late as the Aegis and T's are going to be claimed. The Aegis is actually going to go towards the Sven. That is kind of confusing because you don't really want 
a transformation hero like a Dragon Knight or a Sven or maybe even a Terrorblade having eight ages because once they do respawn they won't have their transformation spells and uh, I, I, I am really kind of confused with that as we do see the Phantom Lancer he is going to spot out the centaur over there in the high ground uh, but the centaur is going to be quick enough he is going to be able to escape he also has the force tap and the bling dagger so not really going to be surprised if he is going to be able to survive most of these fights as we do see Team Reckoning Esports are uh, having itchy hands as they do want to go for a kill onto one of these heroes try to you know push down the bottom lane as that is exactly what they want to do as the tiny and the willow meanwhile in the top lane they're going to be going for the push and the tiny is not someone you really want hitting at your buildings with that tree just slapping up those towers and making short work of them as we do see the arcane rune getting picked up by the phantom lancer allowing him to have that lower cooldown the doppelganger is going to matter a little bit more as the bottom lane's tier 2 is going to get seized up by the side of reckoning esports and they can certainly uh, go for a high ground push but uh, i don't think that is recommended as the tiny is going to be dealing a little bit of damage onto the tier 3 in the top lane as the phantom lancer is actually going to go for a pause right now as pasol he is not really here okay the go sign has been given immediately the phantom lancer and his friends are going to be pushing the top lane as we do see the tps coming up and this might just be able to discourage them from actually going forward we do see the roll forward and the boulder smash onto the tiny the tiny is going to be able to turn around and try to get that kill out of the earth spirit we do see the tps coming from the ursa but that is just a little bit too late the sven is able to tp back to base and okay no he's not able to tp back to base he's just looking to tp the bkb getting popped up by the mirana will be able to secure the kill onto the tiny and that is going to be Kanegi going down once more a 4 6k net worth lead right now as the bounty runes are going to get secured by the Sven over at the bottom as the top ones are going to be secured by the Undying and his friends so not really surprised over there the centaur is going to be getting a little bit fatter right now he is going to queue up that pipe of insight in his quick buy and the pipe of insight is actually going to and negate a lot of magic damage coming up and magic damage is not just the dark willow it is going to be you know also the phantom lancer refusal blade charges so that is also something you have to take into account the silencer will be able to tp back to base and that just leaves the ursa alone and it looks like the uh, the earth spirit actually wants to go for the ursa and he will be able to do that pretty soon we do see the juking and diving coming up but no he does not have a bling dagger to work with the earth spirit is gonna force out, force him out to use that uh, enrage right now and we do see a little bit of a man fight coming between the earth spirit and the ursa the earth spirit is just juking him around and meanwhile we see the phantom lancer getting arrowed up but the stun is gonna miss as the doppelganger is gonna be there at the right time we do see him trying to escape right there he is actually gonna be able to Use the, use the debate, no, the debate is not going to work as we do see the avalanche coming up and the fear is going to make sure the Phantom Lancer is going to survive but this is looking really bad for the side of Reckoning Esports right now they're just losing heroes left, right and center as the Undying manages to go down first as uh, the... Okay, we do see the Sven, he does not have his ultimate to work with. The Tiny just managed to go down, the Silencer is soon to follow. And they are not done yet, they actually want to go for a kill onto the uh, Phantom Lancer right here. The Phantom Lancer is taking a lot of damage, but meanwhile, over near the tier 3, we see the... We actually see Sven actually getting the kill onto the Ursa. The Phantom Lancer does not have any mana to work with, he does have the heart though, so I'm not going to be surprised. And I don't think he even needs the heart to work right now, as... Uh, he can just give chase with that phantom rush so this is you know the decisive win for uh reckoning esports they did manage to win that fight without any doubt they did not have they were not the team who had to spend those buybacks to defend so i'm not really gonna contemplate that it is going to be reckoning esports victory the bkb getting completed onto uh the sven right there he is gonna go for the daedalus next uh, and uh, the daedalus is not gonna be uh, you know a weird item choice it is pretty standard onto a uh, sven right there i would have personally gone for something around the lines of a bloodthorn it is gonna be really good versus a hero like ursa but i don't think uh the sven is getting picked in this game to you know go up against the ursa the sven is gonna be there to uh, go up against the phantom lancer and that is exactly what he needs to do as we do see the mirana just constantly getting fat right now the maelstrom and the bkb getting completed the phantom lancer though he's looking really strong is gonna queue up that butterfly and this is one of the reasons why i don't understand why does the phantom lancer or Mino in general, why does he not go for a BKB early on? If he does, he would win most of his fights pretty convincingly and that would allow his team to actually go for the fight, but no, he's not doing that. 
and we see the arrow it is going to miss onto the dark willow we do see the smoke up coming from the side of reckoning esports they want to go forward they don't really spot out any of these heroes the uh, centaur warner though he is going to go back and push down the bottom lane. Uh, the Earth Spirit is going to go for a warding spree, making sure that uh, there is going to be enough vision for them to take a fight in. As we do see the blinks coming from the... Uh the, the Ursa right there, he is trying to blink away, make sure that he escapes, but little does he know that it's only the Earth Spirit over there. As the Earth Spirit, he is trying to go for a kill. No, he is. Okay, the Moonlight Shadow is going to be there. He is going to be able to spot out the Dark Willow. The Dark Willow is going to go down right now as Moon is going to be unstoppable. The TPs are going to be there, so the Phantom Lancer and his friends are going to be able to survive. And 60 seconds without the uh, Dark Willow is actually going to be a boon because the Dark Willow did buy back into this game. He does not have buyback to work with. And he is one of those essential heroes you need to actually control these team fights as the Bramble Mage and the Cursed Crown actually do a lot in these games. And we do see the Ursa and his friends are actually trying to go towards Roshan. We see the immediate smoke up coming from the side of Reckoning Esports as we do see the Sven and his friends trying to go for the push and they might be able to do that but it looks like they want to you know, scout out the jungle area make sure that the Phantom Lancer is going to get killed but this is you know a really good time for them to actually go for a kill onto the tier 2 in the top lane we see the scan coming up from the side of uh, Reckoning Esports they just want to make sure that people are not going to be there as we do see the initiation onto the silence and the silencer goes down 45 seconds he is dead right here so that is no global silence to work with and it looks like reckoning esports are gonna go for the tier 3 right now and the tier 3 is going to go down the radiant structures are gonna get fortified over at the top lane and it looks like they're not done yet there is not going to be a silencer in this game for 20 more seconds i guess uh, he does not even have buyback also so things are looking to be kind of difficult for him the phantom lancer is gonna tp back to base try to go for the kill onto one of these heroes uh, He's not yet level 25, so he does not have that, you know, low cooldown onto the doppelganger. We do see the arrow connecting onto one of those illusions, not really going to matter much. But the Phantom Lancer, he actually wants to go for a kill. He wants to go for a fight, while Tiny, in the top lane, he is going to get spotted out by one of these heroes, and that is going to be World on the Centaur Warner. He is going to be taking the kill onto the Tiny, and Kaneki goes down once more. 65 seconds without him. This seems like, uh, you know, LXG Esports are just feeding out their heroes one by one, and this is is gonna you know spite a lot of control pretty soon enough as we do see the Sven he has a Daedalus completed uh, on him already so whoever he initiates on is possibly going to go down without any doubt and we do see him you know teasing that a little bit they do want to go for a push onto the mid lane and the earth spirit is the only one who's missing in this team fight so he needs to make his way towards the mid lane pretty soon enough um, he's just gonna you know use the shrine make sure that he is uh, gonna be back to full HP and mana and we do see the siege going to be underway anytime soon the curse of the silent getting used the centaur is just going to be tanking most of that up and the centaur the centaur push stat is going to be working in their favor as uh, the phantom lancer he actually wants to go for uh, the creep right there and we do see the ultimate getting popped up by the sven right now and the sven is going to be dealing a ton of damage onto the tier 3 in the mid lane but he is going to be forced to back off no he's not going to be forced to back off as the cursed crown is going to get used up the bkb is going to get popped up by the sven and they are just going to be retreating for now they're happy that they got that tier 3 in the mid lane and the top lane of barracks already going down so uh, they have gotten what they wanted they have a 14,000 net worth lead the only thing they have to worry about is the phantom lancer who they have not managed to get a kill on yet uh, uh, in in the recent five minutes at uh, that too so they have to make sure they have that sorted out as we do see uh, LXG esports possibly trying to look for a smoke clear or something uh, they have to be careful the observer wards are going to be able to spot out their locations and uh, the Sven is going to go back to base and he's going to make sure he has the next level of items working into play the earth spirit what a what a cocky player he has that uh, you know Scythe of Vice actually getting queued up in his quick fight, not even a spirit will, so he's just going straight for the side of Vice. And uh, that just shows how confident he is in this game. And the Mirana, meanwhile, has completed that MKB is going to be amplifying the amount of damage that he does. He, he already has that, you know, DPS talent working, the leap giving a hundred plus... Uh, 
attack speed working for him so I'm not really going to be surprised the centaur's illusion meanwhile in the bottom lane is going to bait a little bit of people out as we do see the undying the undying will be able to spot out the location of the roshan as the roshan has spawned up right now and the mirana is going to be dealing tons of damage the uh, sven is going to be tanking numbers with the damage coming up from the roshan and this is going to be roshan going down fairly uncontested and LXE Esports, they have no idea. Maybe they can waste a scan or something onto the Radiant side. But uh, I, don't, I don't think that is going to be the case. As Kaneki, he is going to be making his way. The smoke is going to be just a little bit too late. As Divine is going to be securing the Aegis. And we see a little bit of an initiation maybe coming up. As we do see, the Boris Smash is going to be there. Onto the Undying. No, the Ursa is going to use that BKB. As we do see, BKB is galore. And we see the Sven is going to be dealing a ton of damage right now. The Centaur is, has used up his uh, Stampede. So they don't have another way of initiating maybe. As we do see, the uh, Silencer, he is going to go down right now. The Ursa is going to be going down the tiny is going to be forced to buy back in this game as the phantom lancer is going to be chased up by this one but not nearly enough he is going to go back and you know push down this mid lane just make sure that the barracks are going to get secured as the ursa he is going to buy back the retaliatory buyback coming out from the side of lxg esports just seems a little bit too desperate right now as the sven deals a lot of damage right here and this is just getting too much for them to control as we see the blink dagger is the only thing onto their side which is working out in their favor we see uh, the refresher shot still on the fence so they still have some time to actually go forward to but uh, they're just going to retreat for now uh, go ahead use that shrine get back to full hp and full mana and then maybe you know just siege down these shrines uh, make sure that the accessibility that lxg esports have over their own territory uh, dwindle and uh, i guess that is going to be the case and let's actually see uh, how this is going to be going forward as uh, the undying he has that ghost scepter being completed for him the ghost scepter is going to be proving vital uh, to surviving most of these team fights against the phantom lancer so i'm not really going to be surprised by that pickup you don't really see a lot of uh, item builds for the undying all he needs to do is uh, make sure that he pulls down the tombstone does a lot a little bit of decay heal up his teammates and die and give another tombstone to his team to work with so not really going to be surprised right there so you see the earth spirit has been uh, quite the mvp of this fight his initiations have been on point and even though he has uh, you know died a little bit in this game uh, he has made it work for his teammates and we do see the buyback being used up by the ursa also so this might just be the game going the way for uh, reckoning esports so ladies and gentlemen let's actually see how this is going to be going forward at uh, the moonlight shadow getting used up by the side of reckoning esports and they are going to be going for this might just be the decisive fight or something as uh, a lot of people from the side of lxg esports they do not have any buyback the phantom lancer uh, might have buyback but i don't think uh I don't think that is going to be the case he just got a new item over there as we do see the moonlight shadow is going to go down right now the arrow is not going to land onto anyone but that has given them enough information onto how the situation is inside of that base um, we do see the Sven though he does have his ultimate up he does have the bkb up and the mirana does also deal tons and tons of damage so this is an opportunity if i ever see one they can initiate right now as we do see the moonlight shadow getting popped up and the stun is going to connect on to the phantom lance of the phantom is just gonna melt down like butter as the mid lane of barracks is gonna be under siege right here as the scent is gonna be dealing tons of damage right now uh, the centaur warner he is gonna be taking a little bit of damage but not nearly enough the curse of dawn is not gonna connect onto any of his allies as the Sven is making short work right there as we see the earth bird, the earth bird is just controlling the ursa and meanwhile the fear is going to connect all the two of these heroes the phantom lancer is trying to go for a kill and maybe we might see a refresher short work play coming from the silencer uh, from the Sven actually but the Sven is just going to turn around and man fight he has a day he does not necessarily need his ultimate to work with as we see the aegis is going to get popped up he's going to use his refresher shot right now in a lose off as the earth bird he is going to be able to live to tell the tale but no we see the, uh, we do see the Sven actually getting the kill under the Phantom Lancer and that is going to be him going down without a buyback and that is going to be GG called and LXG Esports they lose this game and Reckoning Esports they have secured the third place in this tournament and with that being said they are going to be getting sure getting that 50,000 rupees fivefold for themselves and ladies and gentlemen this was the final game of Dota 2 
for at least the online phase but you still have a lot of the lines being played up uh, for Acer Predator League the 24th of November you have both PUBG and Dota 2 which is going to be happening especially for Dota 2 we have Signify versus ROG Titan so don't miss that and if you actually don't have a pass to work with go to the Facebook live stream share that with the hashtag Night of the Predator and you will get yourself a chance to win one free pass for a viewer so don't really forget to do that and meanwhile also like share and subscribe to this channel right here and also don't forget to tap the bell icon so you guys know when we are going to be streaming next and let's actually see the stats and uh, see what actually went wrong for the side of LXG esports you see LXG esports they had their items and uh, it's the same as what happened previously Mino just did not get that BKB the stunts really worked out uh, for, for the Sven and he managed to get that kill onto the Phantom Lancer every time and if he had a BKB that would have been uh, another case but he really did not go for that so uh, I guess the reason why LXG Esports lost was their lack of BKBs onto their position on carry and Reckoning Esports they played that extremely well and this is you know quite an amazing game of Dota 2 the Sven did play that extremely well 26,000 gold and just followed closely by Moon on the Mirana 24,000 so just a standard game of Dota 2 getting played this was not as exciting as the previous game but this was kind of decisive this proved who was bought and LXG Esports congratulations you did play it extremely well and good luck to you guys in the upcoming uh, you know next other tournaments but Reckoning Esports somehow managed to you know, get the third place position so revenge is real for Reckoning Esports uh, for getting them eliminated onto the online phase so uh, congratulations Reckoning Esports and with that being said ladies and gentlemen this is Olver also known as Siddharth Prashant and I am going to be signing off right now
Sixth Sense.